Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 157 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Chum Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you and Bob to learn all about knives and knife collecting, our midweek supplemental episode. Bob gets a chance to our favorite word, bloviate about knives and uh, talk about knives, uh, stuff going on with uh, his state of the collection. Tip of the week coming up. We also uh, cover some of the stories in Knife Life News. But first of all, Bob, uh, in our first part of the show here, we get to kind of talk about some things, you know, that kind of come up from week to week, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, a, uh, an exciting development, if you will, from uh, this past Thursday night, Knives uh, Patreon Knife Giveaway regarding yeah. the uh, knife that uh, we, we gave away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So for the uh, Gentleman Junkies, the $10 a month Patreon uh, tier, uh, every month, members get entered into a knifely uh, a knifely a monthly knife giveaway and uh, this month we had a donated knife this awesome tops eye stick push dagger and uh, a, a great gentleman who's been with us uh, all along uh, Timothy won it and he very graciously said I cannot accept that and uh, I would have no no use for it and I cannot believe I mean who does not have a use for a a five pound push dagger. <laughs> just kidding. It's a little bit lighter than that. Uh, just a touch. So he said, please keep it, give it to Jim. Maybe Jim wants it or auction it off for a good cause. Uh, Jim very graciously uh, passed. And so we are doing just that. We're going to auction this off for a good cause. Our good friend, Pete, uh, Peter, you know him as a therapeutic edge, uh, is has a GoFundMe right now. He needs a little help. And that's what we do in this, uh, in this here um, knife world. We help each other out. And, uh, so we're going to auction this baby off on Thursday night knives, uh, tomorrow night. And, uh, and we're going to send the proceeds over to GoFundMe, uh, to, uh, to help with that, that eye surgery. So there you go. It's the right. eye stick. Timothy, thank right. you. Your generosity is, uh, is touching. I mean, who, it, it, it's yeah. not everyone who could just easily pass up such a sweet, uh, novelty is this right 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 yeah and that uh, that auction is october 22nd the knife junkies thursday night knives that's uh, live on youtube and the knife junkies facebook page so uh, be sure to join us at the knife junkie.com slash youtube or the knife junkie.com slash facebook that again is tomorrow if you're listening to this when it comes out uh, but that's uh thursday october 22nd 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, we'll do the uh, auction uh, live on the Thursday night show. So, uh, yeah, should be exciting. Looking forward to that. We've uh, done knife giveaways and you've done an Instagram uh, knife auction, mm -hmm. but we haven't ever done uh, an auction on YouTube. So that'll be, uh, you'll get to be the auctioneer. Hey, I got it. What, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've been practicing that voice my whole life. And, uh, and, you know, I think it'll be more fun to do it live on Thursday Night Knives than on Instagram. On Instagram, it was cool to, to see bids come in, but in a way, there's such detachment. Uh, and, and I don't feel the same uh, kinship uh, with my Instagram following as I do with the people uh, on Thursday Night Knives. Thursday Night Knives, it's this, you know, we, we kind of have a, uh, a tight crew that, that joins us every week and uh, it's growing. Uh, but there, you know, there's so many more people on Instagram that I just don't, I just don't feel it there. So it'll be fun to, to see. Yeah, Plus yeah. we, we know that therapeutic edge is a good friend of the show Thursday night knives. Uh, he's been on it and he comments uh, every week or, you know, frequently. And uh, so it'll be a, it'll be a fun, fun event. Well, if you would like to uh, get in on that auction, of course, watch on Thursday, October 22nd, 10 p.m. Uh, we'll have that uh, knife auction. And, of course, every third Thursday, Bob will be giving away the uh, Patreon members knife giveaway. And if you'd like to get in on that uh, knife giveaway uh, chance, uh, you can uh, join the Knife Junkies uh, Patreon uh, account. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Bob, three, three levels of... Uh, 
membership, but only the the top tier gets the uh, the chance for the drawing. Expl explain uh, that if you could. That's right. Well, uh, at a three dollar level, you're a traditional junkie, and uh, if you hadn't guessed, these are these tiers are all named after knife types. Uh, if you're a five dollar a month uh, uh, patron, it's uh, you're a tactical junkie, and then if you're a ten dollar a month, uh, you get all of the benefits of the other. That's a shout out on the show and some stickers. Uh, and, uh, but when you're at the $10 level, then you get entered into this, uh, uh, contest to win. And they've been some, there have been some very robust and, uh, and, uh, I'm not going to use that word, but uh, some some very tactical high speed. Some cool? Were you going to say cool? No, I was going to say testosterone driven, but some uh, very, very like, uh, you know, we've, we've given away a K bar. We've given away a, a cold steel SR one folder, uh, the Pentagon XR, this, this tops eye stick. So the next one, we're taking a shift seeing as recently, this has been my bread and not my bread and butter. This has been my, my wheelhouse. We're going to give away something traditional next time. And by traditional, I mean, slip jointy. And, uh, cause I realize, um, all of these knives are great and I love them all. Um, there are different types and not everyone can accept this knife. I mean, maybe where you live, maybe where Timothy lives, this isn't even legal. Uh, I don't even know if it's legal where I live. <laughs> Cut that. Just kidding. We're not cutting that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it'll be something traditional this month. So I want I want a little something for everybody, a lot of different tastes, not just right. my 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 sort of taste. Okay. All right. Well, the, again, the, uh, the auction for the push dagger is on Thursday, October 22nd. And then the third Thursday of November is I believe the 19th, November 19th. So that will be the next, uh, Patreon knife giveaway, uh, that, uh, we'll have, we'll spin the wheel of names on uh, Thursday, November 19th. So, uh, plenty of chance for you to, uh, get in on your chance to, uh, to win a knife from the Knife Junkie at the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Uh, a lot of uh, announcements here in the opening part of the show, Bob. You and I chatted, and you you felt the itch. It's time for another I do. town hall. I, I've, I've been feeling the itch for a town hall, and it just sort of happens naturally. I, I think it, we're on some sort of a seasonal rhythm, and uh, it seems to be time for, for the next town hall. So we're going to do it on November 14th, Saturday, November 14th. And this time, uh, the angle will be shop tour uh, and new design preview for 2021. Uh, 2020 has been such an awesome year, uh, really auspicious, and everyone's been thriving and so happy. We're, we just want to... We, we just want to thrust ourselves into 2021 with even greater uh, optimism. And so we're going to do that with this uh, with this town hall shop tour. Uh, I want to see where people are making these things. Um, we've been uh, we've been in the shop of uh, Bastion Coves uh, and we've been in uh, several other shops. But uh, uh, but I want to I want to see the machines. I want to get a walkthrough sort of process thing and then um, also, we've spoken to a lot of people who don't actually make knives. They design them. And I would love to uh, to get in the weeds with some of these designers about what they have coming up. Maybe they can show off some, uh, some you know, preview some designs coming up, give a tease of things they want to release in 2021. I haven't reached out to anyone yet, so I can't make any promises. But, you know, maybe we can get some exclusives. We've gotten a few on this show before, uh, like when Curtis Iovito... Uh, uh, drop that they were making the 3.25 inch um, Spartan Harzy folder. That was a uh, that was fun. That was cool. Nice to hear that news before uh, before it hit the mainstream. And uh, well, maybe we can get some more of that in this town hall coming up on November 14th at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. You're muted, Jim. <laughs> You're muted, sir. But so uh, I. I I'll I do that every time. I try to keep the background noise silent while you're talking and forget to unmute. You're just lucky just I didn't, I didn't burst. You're lucky I didn't break into Blue Moon because I've been known to do that when my nerves I'd are up. I'd, I'd have found the, the mute button for you pretty quick. <laughs> As as I was saying, when my lips were moving earlier, uh, November fourteenth, yeah, it's the uh, uh, the time of the year we're in that uh, that fourth quarter, that uh, holiday giving, that holiday buying time. So it's a it's a great time for uh, knife makers and knife designers to uh, sell some stuff. So if you've got some new things coming out, or even if you've got you know your your 
air quote standard supply or stock or whatever, and you want to come on and uh, show off those or, you know, kind of give us a behind the scenes look at some of the other stuff, that'd be, uh, that'd be pretty cool. So just email Bob at Bob at the knife junkie.com. If you'd like to be a part of the knife town hall, the next knife junkies town hall, Again, November 14th at noon Eastern time. And that will be uh, live on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And if you're new to the whole concept of the town hall, it is audience participation driven. So you right. are commenting in and uh, and and we can even get you on the air for a minute, you know, with your iPhone to ask a question. Uh, so it's a real time actual town hall. It's just virtual. Actual. Right. <laughs> actual virtual really man <laughs> november 14th at noon mark it on your calendar of course we'll have uh, more news and information about that uh, on the following shows and on bob's instagram feed and all that and we'll uh, try to announce guests and uh, makers and manufacturers designers as we uh, get them scheduled so you'll uh, be able to, able to uh, keep in touch real time about what's going to be happening on november 14th so again mark your calendar we can't wait for another Knife Junkie Town Hall. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, Bob, just a couple of stories this week in uh, Knife Life News, but I think we want to uh, start with uh, Hinderer, I believe, yes. something uh, going on there. Hmm, God. Well, <laughs> yes, Hinderer. I just love Hinderer knives. I love, uh, well, I love everything about them. I do not have any of their fixed blades though. And uh, I am, I got to say, I'm a little fascinated. Uh, I, this is where I am. I'll be 100% honest. I have a hard time paying hinderer money for uh, a hinderer fixed blade. I do not have trouble paying hinderer money for a hinderer folder. To me, the engineering that goes into a hinderer folder and the design is 100,000% worth the cost. Uh, I, I don't necessarily feel that way about their fixed blades, only because a fixed blade is a much more simple affair. Um, but I have to say they are gorgeous. They came out with a sort of ranch series. I think it's called the ranch series uh, last year with the or a couple in the last couple of years with the Bowie. And then they had the um, uh, the the Spanto harpoon version. Well, now they have a new knife coming out called the Emmett fixed blade. Emmett, very kind of country name. And the Emmett is, uh, well, it's got sort of a, it's got a Bowie, it's got a four inch Bowie blade, and it's got that sort of uh, very familiar um, XM18 handle profile, uh, but it's all in a fixed blade. I mean, you look at it, it really actually does look like a folder. It pretty much has those proportions. Um, that being said, I wouldn't mind seeing this with a slightly longer blade, uh, but that would basically take you up to the ranch series. Uh, what I like about this Emmet is the Bowie shape. I'm a big fan of Hinderer's Bowie, uh, Bowie blade shape, especially in the XM24, where I feel like it has the room to truly express itself. Um, but the XM18 Bowie, which is they're now doing a run of, and you can find it in your in your local knife shop. Dot 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 Blade HQ at 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 all, and uh, they are also good looking. But I, I feel like it's a it's a slightly compacted version of the of the true expression of the hinderer bowie shape. I feel like this Emmet is the true expression of the hinderer bowie. It's got a really long, beautiful swedge, but the tip comes up high enough, which I feel like the XM18 bowie, the tip doesn't quite come up high enough. Um, this one it does. It comes in a Kydex sheath. Uh, it's 20 CV. It's going to come with a variety of micarta G10 and uh, Coca Bolo. And then uh, it's also going to be immediately um, given the classic treatment. Wait, what do they call it? I'm sorry. Uh, the Hinderer has the, their whole classic line, vintage series line. And so that means it will have not 20 CV steel, but it'll have the 01 tool steel and it will have the, uh, the traditional walnut kind of stock handles. Uh, so it'll look kind of like an old M1 Garand, uh, but uh, beautiful knife. I, I really like it. And I have to say it's the first, uh, the first of the fixed blades where I'm like, Hmm, maybe to me uh, it'll be worth dropping, uh, dropping the, the dollars for uh, dropping hinderer money on <laughs> <laughs> dropping hinderer money. It looks like it has a, a nice groove going down the center of the handle, yeah. uh, which looks like it might be very comfy. Yeah, but a uh, cool knife. And, there were, and what are the uh, the handle handles? 
Uh, well, those, the one in the picture there is my Carta, but it'll okay. also be available in G10 and Cocobolo, which That's will look the word I can remember. Cocobolo wood is so beautiful. Um, and then also the Walnut when you get the 01 in the vintage series. So mm -hmm. kind of a cool release. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind having it. Let me put it that way. <laughs> well, you know, if somebody <laughs> twisted your arm, I'm sure you'd be glad yeah. to take one off of them if they needed yeah. you to. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I would give an unfair positive review if it were sent to me for free. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can you believe that now? Now in the future, uh, they'll clip this and they'll put it up and say, see, he's shilling for Hinderer. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> but, to say. There's nothing to but say. We'll, we'll go from, uh, am, I, am I right in assuming we're going to go from kind of one end of the knife spectrum to another by talking about Tucson knives next? Well, several spectrums because, uh, or spectra, who knows? I don't know what the, what the plural is. Uh, but we're, talk we're going from one end to the other in that we're talking about a fixed blade. Now we're going to be talking about a folder. Uh, over here, uh, we're talking about the hinder. We're talking about American made and design knife. And over here, we're talking about a Chinese knife, two sons. Uh, and over here, we're talking about a very expensive knife. And here we're talking about no doubt uh, what will be a less expensive knife. Uh, but uh, so I, I find this interesting. And the reason I'm bringing it up is you very rarely hear about, uh, I very rarely hear about two sun knives in knife news or on the knife magazine newsfeed, or you don't hear much about them. They mysteriously mm. slip onto the scene. People buy them and uh, you know are crazy about them. There is a uh, there's a real uh, um, passion for these knives, and there's there's a, it's no wonder why they're beautifully made. And if you love the designs, they are intric intricately and you know very very detailed in their designs and execution. And they use amazing materials. And so anyway, this new one comes out, it catches my eye. It has it has the look of the old, um, what is it? The Spyderco Ruckus, I think, with the, or not Spyderco, I'm sorry. The Benchmade Ruckus. Uh, and I can't remember who designed that, but it was a very famous uh, knife designer. And it had those kind of that series of holes in the blade. Uh, that was the first thing that popped into my mind here, but, but just looking at this knife, um, that's the one aspect of it that I, I don't find so fetching. I, I don't mind the holes on the handle on the blade. I don't like them, but that inlay is, is so cool and so beautiful. And, uh, the handle and the, and the blade shape are so, um, I don't know. Something about this one in particular really stands out to me. Uh, it's a night morning design. I love the name night morning. Uh, it's a night morning design. And uh, like Jelly Jerry, night morning design uh, is uh, a frequent contributor to Two Sun Knives, if not a permanent member. I don't really understand Two Sun Knives. There's not much to research right. if you want to know about about it. But this one is going to be using 14C28N. Uh, where in the past they've used D2, they've used uh, S90V, they've used M390. Uh, this one, which is called the 623, that's the number. Uh, they have, uh, they go by TS, Tucson, and then a number. In this case, it's the 263. Uh, but so I think this will be less expensive being a 14C28N uh, blade steel. Uh, but, you know, let's see 4.13 ounces so it's light and uh and it's a it's a beautiful little creation and i i feel like a company like tucson with their obvious manufacturing capability can just take design after design after design cad design after cad design after cad file and just continuously pump out you know, small, smallish batches of really, you know, well-made unique knives. And uh, it's a, it's an interesting model. It'd be very cool to uh, talk to someone. There's got to be, okay, this will be my research project for the week. There's got to be a, a U.S. representative. And I'm pretty sure if I ask a few people we know, uh, we'll, we'll find that out. Right. And I'd love to talk right. to them and, and get a little bit more insight into Tucson because what they do is, is, is is even uh, even kind of defies what what the bigger, more established Chinese manufacturers are doing. You know, they're mm. the the way that they can be so s kind of small and nimble, right. nimble meaning they keep coming out with model after model after model. But they're they're small and they're limited. Uh, 
I, I don't understand how they do it. So it'd be interesting to find out. Mm -hmm. Maybe the knife junkie can become a distributor of Tucson knives if they don't have a U.S. distributor. <laughs> ah. I'm sure they probably do. Yeah, uh, they do, and I have a feeling uh, we've talked about it. But I, you know, yeah. there's, there's there's not enough space up in here. I <laughs> uh, hear you know less space up in here. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting, uh, seeing the picture, uh, the four holes on the handle, and then the four mm -hmm. um, kind of exact handles, if you will, uh, exact holes on the the blade. Um, why do you, is it just this knife that you don't like holes in the handle or any knife you don't, I mean, holes no, no, in no. the blade? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I like the, uh, it depends, you know, I like them as opening holes. I like, uh, I like um, the, the lozenge shaped slot you find on a lot of, like on hinderer knives. I like, uh, I like the, the round shaped patented spider hole. <laughs> I love that they patented the circle. Awesome. Uh, but I like the round hole from Spyderco, et, et cetera. But I don't like it as a flourish. I don't like, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, I don't like the little holes in the blade of the of the Todd Begg knives. Now, Todd Begg knives are, are art knives. They're beautiful, incredible creations. But when I look at the holes, I think, oh, like all sorts of gunk is going to get caught in there. Like I would be using it in anything gunky anyway. But right. Some, right. something about the concept I don't like. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And in this knife, it's... A little too frivolous for my for my care. Actually, it reminds me of uh, the doodles of an old uh, close friend I had who used to doodle these whole uh, pages full of uh, uh, circles like that, getting smaller and larger and and receding into space. So I like the three dimensional aspect of it, but just not on the blade. Okay, All right. front front flipper. Um, I. I yeah. Okay. Well, when I was looking at it, uh, I was going, my first reaction was I really love the pattern on the handle. I like mm. the handle. Me too. And then kind of my second, very close first reaction was either one or the other. Too many notes. Exactly right. One or yeah. the other. It's yeah. like, okay, you, you've got the, the beautiful handle shape and the yeah. beautiful inlay, which obviously uh, takes manufacturing chops and is a beautiful design flourish. Then you have this really uniquely shaped blade and a front flipper. Does it need the holes? It's just like, uh, you know, God, it's a little, yeah, right, right. It's like, let's put an Oreo on top of this banana split. <laughs> right, <laughs> with a cherry and then whipped cream and uh, <laughs> maybe a side of uh, apple pie. <laughs> yeah, wash it down with some, with some pancake batter. Ooh. Man, now I'm hungry for some reason. I wonder why. <laughs> and now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, Bob. Our uh, weekly dive into uh, Knife Life News and uh, then the weekly dive into your state of the collection where you get a chance to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, knives in your collection. So uh, yes. what, what's up on the slate for us today? Well, so right now uh, we're going to talk a minute about a sub sub collection. Excuse me. We've spoken on the show about the concept of the sub collection. You have a collection of knives, but you have a collection of Bowie knives within that. That's a sub collection. You have a collection of folders, but you have a, you have some autos. You have some automatic knives. So that's your little sub collection of auto knives. Well, I have a sub collection of slip joints and knives that I loosely call traditional. Uh, well, within that, I have several sub collections, and one of them uh, is the camp knife. These uh, camp knives um, are knives that maybe you were introduced to from your grandpa. For instance, this is my grandfather's knife that he gave me ages ago. This was my first knife. It's a Camillus, you know, camp model with the uh, with the uh, can opener and the. Uh, um, bottle opener and and screwdriver and then the blade and an awesome awl. I used this all all throughout childhood to fashion all sorts of, you know, holes in things to make spears or whatever I was doing, um, you know, cutting into leather. This uh, was the most used tool on this knife. Uh, incidentally, on Thursday Night Knives, we talked about uh, the Professor EDC open tag, what knife defines you. Uh, most to me, it was this knife, even though I have all these other awesome ones. This one is the perfect blend of sentimentality and actually has been used a lot. Um, this is a camp knife and 
I've been very interested recently. I've been in a crest in my interest in traditional knives. And I was like, what about what's being made right now for camp knives? It's like the Swiss army knife came along and kind of eclipsed the camp knife uh, because you can get so many different versions of it with so many different tool sets and they're stainless and they're bright and they're, and they're cheap and, and that kind of thing. Uh, so what happened to the camp knife? I looked into it and they're still being made, but not, not hugely not widely and broadly. Uh, but uh, one of them, the first one that caught my eye was a, uh, a Rough Rider because I've been lo looking at Rough Riders. They bought the name, <laughs> I'll come over here. They bought the name Camp King, which has been made for years and years and years under the Imperial line. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's such a great shot. Let me come over here. Under the Imperial line. Uh, and then Imperial sold the sold the rights to this, I guess, uh, to Rough Rider before they folded, and Rough Rider started producing the Camp King. Now, the cool thing about this, so this has the traditional tool set of can opener, bottle opener with the uh, well, with the screwdriver and the awl. This awl is terrible, actually. This awl I need to regrind doesn't actually come to an edge here just sort of looks like it does. But, you know, for a $17 knife, there might be some things to, to take care of. Uh, but traditional tool set in 440A steel, it's got a beautiful uh, bone handle, uh, which I like a lot. 17 bucks, not too hard to find. This blade, however, if you look closely, there's a little ding, right? If you look at my forehead, there's a little ding in the blade there. And that's from coming down and hitting the awl. So it doesn't fit perfectly in here. So you can't snap this one down, but it's got the traditional bail on it. And uh, it's a great little knife. This is a, this is a perfect like junk drawer knife that uh, it ends up in the junk drawer and it gets used for 30 years, you know, 25 years. We had a couple of knives like that in our junk drawer at home that just remained there forever and they just got used and used and used. They weren't glorified. They weren't, no one ever took an Instagram picture of them, but they, they, they sat there quietly and did their job. <laughs> um, so the, this Camp King is the current version of this old Camp King. This is from the fifties or sixties. Uh, I got it from my grandfather and uh, Tobias Gibson would know when this is from, that is called shell construction because that bolster and that handle are all one piece of aluminum or metal kind of popped onto the frame, pressure fit onto that frame. And uh, that's one, so that's not actually jig bone. Camp King, camp with a K, just like KOA, Campgrounds of America. So uh, it's cool to have, or I'm gonna stop saying cool. It's, it's uh, pleasing to me to have an old version and a new version of this knife. Uh, also, I, I got this Boker, which is really nice. It's, it's like 50% uh, <laughs> more slender than the Camp King. Uh, but this has a beautiful ebony handle and a very nice blade. It's hollow ground, it's very, very sharp. It's got the, the same, uh, same tool set and a very nice awl or punch blade right there. These things are very useful. So yeah, th this has been my foray into the camp knife. I think it's uh, as officially stopped unless I come across a Great Eastern Cutlery 99 camp knife, which has got to be the coolest knife they've ever produced. I've never had one in hand, but uh, if anyone that knows of one, has a bead on one, please send me an email. I would love to have one of those GEC camp knives. Right. Oh, God. So does that mean it's not not a little tiny one? To, is GEC the numbers when they get when the numbers get bigger? Do the knives get bigger? Is that how that I'm, works? I'm, I'm thinking that is how it works because this is uh, very big and this is the 97, and then uh, and then the 86 I got recently is quite big too. So I think that is how it works. The number six Pemberton I have is a teeny tiny. Okay. So yeah, I think that is how it works. All right. So 99 next up. Yeah, on, uh... bring it. Anyone who's got, <laughs> I think it's got a, a clip point blade that size. That's a damn big blade. This is like 3.75 inch clip nice. point blade. And then it's got the rest of the tools and uh, oh, that'd be so cool to have. Yeah. 
All right. Well, speaking of G, uh, GEC, there was uh, the 86 you wanted to talk about, I think. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you were with us on Thursday Night Knives, my brother Vic joined us. And for his birthday, his belated birthday, I got him this knife. But when I ordered it, I ordered one for myself so that, uh, A, uh, I would have it because I love it and it's awesome. But I, I got I got it for him because he gave me a love of the material that the, that the handle is made of. Uh, but I love the experience of getting a new GEC. Is that too blown out? Let's try over here, Jim. I love the experience of a new GEC. You get the, uh, the tube. So 86 is the, here, let me move my mic over here uh, for a second. 86 is the model number. Uh, one is the is the main blade type, and the way they code it is number one is a clip point. Uh, two refers to how many blades are in there, and then 19 uh, refers to the date of manufacture. So this is a number 86 in tortoiseshell acrylic, and uh, what a beautiful knife. So I love the experience of opening these. You just you take the cap off, or you can use, since it's kind of fit tightly in there, you can use your other GEC knife to pop it open. Very pleasing. Another pleasing aspect is you get this beautiful brown wax paper. You get that, which I like very much. And then you, you get the experience of just unrolling the paper and finding the awesome knife within. So this is the knife... Uh, that I got my brother and I got myself. He gave me a love for tortoise shell and it came from our love of Fender guitars and electric guitars in general and the pick guards, uh, tortoise shell really uh, opened our eye or uh, the pick guards opened our eyes to tortoise shell and uh, you know, and uh, old, old sort of personal effects uh, from from bygone days that were made out of, I feel like when we were kids, we were all around a lot of tortoise shell. I don't know if that's true or not, but I love it. And uh, so the 86 has a nice pull, so it'll be a second to open it, but it's got that beautiful clip point blade. Hmm. Let's see over here. Hmm. I think I need another light over here. So it's got the beautiful clip point blade and then it's got, well, listen to this walk and talk. It's got a very nice, very nice pull on this. And then over here on this side, and I like this, some knives with two blades, put the nail necks on the same side. Uh, I like how on this knife, the nail neck for the smaller sheep's foot blade is on the opposite side. Look at that extreme, oh, I already used it. I should have cleaned it. Sorry about that. Uh, but this is a very, very useful blade. And by the way, I uh, so this is a uh, this is a sheep's foot. I, I can't quite tell the difference between a sheep's foot and a coping. I think a coping blade has a more straight profile right there, less of a less of a curved drop. Um, I have not always been impressed with the out the tube sharpness of Great Eastern Cutlery. As a matter of fact, they usually warrant some sort of work, you know, to get them nice and razor sharp. This one came very, very, very impressively sharp out of the box. So that's nice because, uh, I, you know, if I can, if, if I can hold off on sharpening it, I'd like to, you know. All right. Pull it right out of the tube and get, get going working with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to keep this one relatively pristine. Uh, we're going to get to this in a few minutes, uh, but uh, I've been removing the patina from well, the past two, couple of days. I've been removing patinas from a number of my GECs. I'm going to leave it on a few, uh, but on a, on a couple, it's, they haven't been doing it for me. So I'm just, uh -huh. I'm going to keep them, keep them. Looking well, nice. I'm, I'm sure I speak for um, many of our viewers uh, that are actually watching this video on uh, YouTube uh, as and if the uh, folks that are listening to the audio on podcast, uh, this may be one that you want to go and take a look at the video uh, of Bob showing off how how dare you show off that knife that is just filthy and and used and you didn't clean it before you showed it. I mean, 
Yeah. How dare you? You know what that was, Jim? That was a bit of uh, knife guy virtue signaling. Look, look. Oh, I, I used this beautiful blade to cut through tape, aren't I? Aren't I just a use your stuff kind of guy? That's right. That's what aren't I'm I tough. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll 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 go with that. We'll bite on that. So uh, so new knives, uh, but uh, kind of something new this week that you kind of wanted to do is uh, kind of go to the vault and uh, yeah, give give us some memories. Well, yeah, I, I just wanted to give a moment in the sun uh, or the ring light, as it were, uh, to a knife that I just is with me every day, and uh, uh, but it's an unsung hero, and uh, it's about ten years old. So I wanted to talk about it. And it's my Cold Steel Recon 1 clip point in OS 8. And believe it or not, this OS 8 blade in 10 years hasn't fallen apart. This 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 terribly low-tech blade steel has, has kept up. And uh, it's still extremely sharp. That's because I don't really use it much. Uh, but uh, when I do, I've used it at work a bit. Um, then it drops right up beautifully. But this was one of the earlier um, second generation recon ones uh, that had the OS 8 blade steel. It had the sort of painted on coating that was just awful. <laughs> and uh, so I took some air, it's called aircraft stripper or aircraft remover. It's a weird name. Uh, sprayed it on there, scraped off all that stuff. Uh, and uh, really the blade is so beautiful. And underneath, was such a beautiful stonewash finish. It's funny to me that they ever uh, dared coat it with, with the crap they put on it at the time. Now, Cold Steel's coatings now are gorgeous and, and very, very robust and durable. Uh, but in the day, people actually prided themselves on how scratched up the, the, uh, the paint on their blade looked to show off how much they used their knives. With this one, uh, I never quite understood. It, it comes with a very small sharpening choil uh, right here at the at the base and uh, and it's sharpened all the way almost up to it and I think it's because they put the thumb stud on first and they can't sharpen all the way up to the 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 end of the sharpening notch so I just made the sharpening notch larger on this one and uh, not only does it work better for sharpening because as you can see now it clears the thumb stud uh, in this in this way you're sharpening whoops i should probably hold it by the handle if you're sharpening it this way you clear the thumb stud and it just looks cool so uh this this knife uh yeah i did a little a little poor man's lanyard bead i don't know this was some spare part from a ikea furniture or something and uh, i made myself a little little fob here and and so this thing rides in my backpack and and uh has for a long long time and i just wanted to pull it out and show everyone I just wanted to yeah. go into the bag <laughs> and retrieve it and show it off and say, uh, just because it's OS 8 doesn't mean it's garbage. This this has really this has really kept up. So uh, so people don't feel bad when the steel snobs and uh, sometimes I might be one of them make you feel bad for your uh, for your perfectly serviceable and probably old and sentimentally attached knives. All right. Well, you know, a lot of times that's uh, what it's about. It's the uh, sentimentality, uh, who gave it to you, where you bought it, when you bought it, what was going on in your life at that time that you can remember that story. You know, yeah. so a lot, a lot of that is uh, what goes into knife collecting as well as collecting of anything. You know, it's it's the memories. <laughs> yeah. And I won't break it's out into that song. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of memories, actually, uh, the tip of the week, I'm just going to go right into the tip of the week. Add on, man. Because uh, because this is about removing memories. Uh, this is a knife that my mother just gave me, and uh, she got it from the little. Um, you know, she lives in a community, uh, uh, assisted living community, and they have a garage sale there. Uh, and so, basically, when people pass away, uh, and uh, the the stuff that doesn't get claimed by their family, they sell off uh, at, at this garage sale, and it goes to to uh, you know the proceeds go to the community. And uh, she bought this for me, and she bought a couple other knives that we talked about last week. Uh, and this was someone's knife before they died. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautifully made Dexter Knives uh, L.L. Bean branded uh, Camp Chef's Knife. 
camp because it's got this extra long handle and that's so i'm calling it a camp plus it came from ll bean it's like it's not straight up for the kitchen it's got some outdoor element to it but the thing i'm getting at is it's a carbon steel blade so it has a nice patina on it but it's someone else's patina and i feel like to make it mine i need to remove it uh as i mentioned before i removed the patinas from some of my uh uh, GECs and brought back their beautiful polish um, this week. And I feel like it's got to be done with this one because it's a very beautiful blade, makes a great sound. And uh, I need to get it into the rotation in the kitchen. Uh, I will probably take very, very light sandpaper to the handle. I don't want to sand off any of this stuff, but just very light and then oil the handle. But what I'm going to do, and I'm going to start it right now, is I'm going to remove this other person's patina because. Uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like it's a personal thing and and uh, uh, I, I don't mean to wipe away their life's experience, but I'm sure they have other ways to commemorate their life's experiences. And uh, and to me, I want a fresh start on this knife. So I'm going to take, I love, if you have old sweatpants, which we all do, you cut off the legs, you throw away the rest, you, you, you take the legs and they have very, very soft material on both sides and they make for gr great polishing cloths. So I'm gonna take a little bit of, now uh, a lot of people use flits. I like flits, I don't have any flits. I went to Walmart and I got mothers. I do like mothers. I, I've used this, uh, you find this in the, in the car section, uh, but I've used this impregnated uh, various uh, straps with this material. It's, it's, it's a good material for not only stropping, but for polishing metals. So really to, to, to get rid of a patina like this, uh, and a patina is non-red rust, right? It's an oxidization that will protect the blade. Um, so I want to build one back up, but like I said, with my own, with my own life experiences. Uh, so I'm going to show you just with the tip of this. Just take some of the the uh, polish on here. Oh wait, this is a good. Hang on. Can you see there, Jim? All right. So take some of the polish and put it in and start rubbing. And then I'll take some more, put it on the other side where it is, start rubbing, kind of get it worked in there a little bit. And then you gotta be careful. This is not very sharp at the tip, so I don't feel uh, too endangered by it. But then you start, oh boy, this is gonna take a lot more work. <laughs> But uh, I've already, I can already see that I've removed a little bit. Um, Jim, do you have any carbon steel blades in your kitchen? Anything like this? Or are they all uh, more modern looking uh, stainless, shiny stainless steel? Um, more modern, but uh, good tip is I'm buying uh, knife junk drawer lots at auction. There's always a bunch of knife drawer junk, uh, knife drawer <laughs> lots at auction that I could uh, purchase. And I would have never thought about doing this. Car parts. This might require that I go a little bit, uh, go with something with a, with a little higher grit but uh, it's already, you can see, it's already begun to remove some of that. And some of the deeper pitting might take more grit or it might just, uh, you know, might not come out unless I use something like very fine sandpaper, which I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go overboard with it, but I, I do want to, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna need to clean up the edge and everything like that. And so to have less of this on there uh, will be better. There's a, a an old uh, French, knife brand called Sabatier. And when my mom handed this to me, I thought that's what she was handing me at, at very first. And, uh, but I love this style of knife. Um, so, uh, yeah, there you have it. So you can do this with your pocket knives. Uh, you know, if I wanted to, and I never would, I could remove the patina from this old Camillus of my grandfather's, but that's what kept this thing going for so long was that it had a patina, you know? So I'm not going to, uh, but some of the right. some of the uh, GECs that I sort of just started a patina on just for fun, um, I've be begun to take off just so, I don't know, I want them to look beautiful again. Right. 
some of the uh, some of the spots on the the tip there that you were working on, like some of the I guess the deeper um, spots or deeper things that that aren't coming off immediately, are those what what are those? Are those kind of more into the metal or yeah, uh, that's uh, that's pitting. So okay. that's going that's that's going deeper into the metal. Now I guess I could sand it uh, and get to. Uh, but you know what? This is funny because this is um, I'm seeing little occlusions in the blade. Actually, I'm seeing a little uh, like if this were forged in fire, they'd be like, I don't know. There's a crack right there, you know, that you can see some flaws in the steel. But, uh, you know, I presumably this is a forged knife, not hand forged, but. Uh, you know, it's so it's carbon steel, so it's gone through a, a different sort of heating and quenching process. So what's what's your next step after you go through that with the what what is it the the wax stuff after you go through that you clean it all up two or three times maybe you do all that what's next then is there anything else that you're going to do to that knife uh, no assuming I've done the handle at that point then I'll put an edge on it sharpen it and get it in rotation and then as I start using it on certain things uh, you know like I'll, I might uh, um, cut a bunch of apples with it or or cut uh, onions with it and then let it sit for a while with it on there, maybe until it's time to clean up after dinner and then wash it thoroughly with soap. Um, and then that will have already stained the steel a little. You do that a bunch of times and then you'll get something like this. I mean, this is a beautiful patina on this uh, on this number 66 uh, GEC. You can look uh, by contrast to a blade in the same knife that does not have a patina. Uh, but this was done just from cutting apples pretty much cutting my lunch. So that's food, uh, you know. So yeah, I'll build up my own and I'll show it off later because I know everyone will be on tenter hooks waiting to find out what my patina looks like. Well, I don't I don't know if I'll be that that far along down the excitement <laughs> scale, but I definitely would like to, like to see, uh, see it after you clean it up. Maybe if you just show a picture of it and you know what the handle looks like as well as the blade and then, uh, Give us an update, uh, you know, a few weeks or a couple of months down the road after you uh, cut up all those apples and stuff yeah. like that. And I've, I've heard you mention that before, uh, uh, leaving the the apple juice or apple residue, if you will, uh, on the knife to kind of help with that patina. Is that because of the like acidic acid or something? Yeah, in it? yeah, yeah. It accelerates it. You know, it's uh, it's people call it a forced patina. It's like I'm forcing it. But, uh, you know, I... It's not a force patina. It's just I'm leaving the juice on there a little bit longer. Force patina would be me dunking it in vinegar and right, being right. scientific about it. This, I'm just trying to accelerate it, you know. Accelerate, Ordinarily, right. I just eat an apple like this. But since becoming a knife junkie, you know. Got to cut it. Gotta cut it with got to be yeah. a knife. <laughs> Don't want to, you know, damage my dental work. Oh, no. No. Not when you've got at least one knife around that's uh, suitable for the task. Exactly. And even if it's not suitable, it'll still get the task done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll make it work. That's right. All right. Well, cool. We've uh, learned some stuff, uh, had a good tip of the week, uh, looked at some uh, Knife Life news and uh, Bob's state of the collection. And we've also learned about the uh, Knife Junkies auction that's coming up on no uh, October 22nd. That's going to be the auction of the uh, Topps iStick Push Dagger. Bob will show that off here. Let me go widescreen. Every house needs one. That's right. Again, that's uh, Thursday, October 22nd on Thursday Night Knives. That's at 10 p.m. on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. And then uh, don't forget the next Knife Junkie Town Hall. That's going to be on, what do we say, Bob? November, November 14th. 14th. Right. Saturday, so, November 14th at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Right. And if you uh, are a knife maker, knife manufacturer, and you would uh, like details on uh, what it is and how you can get involved, just uh, email Bob at Bob at the knife .com, Bob at the knife .com, And I uh, look forward to uh, having you show off your wares and give a tour of your shop, as well as uh, you just regular old knife collector like Bob and me to uh, to join the show, watch, leave your comments in the chat, maybe even uh, come on the show and uh, ask a question of a maker or show off one of the 
designers knives that you have that kind of good stuff so november 14th at noon you can find that on the knife junkies youtube channel at the knife junkie.com slash youtube or the knife junkies facebook group that's at the knife junkie.com slash facebook all right bob pretty long show again this week we have a tendency to uh, to go long sometimes we're mm -hmm. showing off knives that's the great part about this uh, video show which i'm 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 except for my face on video i'm really <laughs> liking the extended huh. time that you get to talk about and show off the knives yeah and and I, it it just occurred to me um we don't see each other at work anymore so we sure. we sign on for this and it's like we get to gab in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hey, man, that's that's the whole thing. So I know you're about to toss to my final word. So I'm going to cut you off and, and give my final word, then ask you for one. My final word is do this. Dig into the collection. Find something old that you were very psyched about. When I got this knife, I was like, man, you know, mm, I can I can I'm, I'm almost done. I'm pretty much done now that I have this knife. And of course, uh, you know, that wasn't true. But it's still a great thing. I'm glad I pulled it out. I needed to use it for something. I'm glad I had it out. And uh, and remembering that, uh, you know, even though we we get up in the rarefied air with these expensive knives, some, some of this other stuff is just, just as awesome. And it's not going to dissolve because it's not made of 20 CV. Jim, yeah. your last word, sir. Well, you know, that's not my job is to give the last word. The knife junkie is supposed to give the last word. But uh, I will just say... The best knife is the one you got on you. So use what you got. Mm, is that pretty good? Thing. That's awesome. All right. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for listening and watching to the Knife Junkie podcast. We're on episode number 157, and we truly do appreciate your support. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.